there's one extra C note in there under the condition that, that you'll give me a little lesson in this rig. <laughs> might be in one of those. We'll try to get it uh, sorted out tomorrow, hopefully. See how it goes. Like six inches longer than the biggest one I've ever seen. That's it's something else. For some people, hunting season never ends. Staying in the forefront of global conservation leaves business and safety at stake. These three men risk it all for the hunts of a lifetime. True Magnum TV is proudly presented by Zeiss. In South Africa, Rob Dunham has one evening to hunt kudu for himself before the work of hosting true Magnum clients begins. All on the foot of this mountain, yeah? On makes the backside where the we backside, were, yes. yeah. Makes another open spot there where they also like to come out at night. Last night, they started coming out of that about this time into this agricultural field. So we're just sitting back in the shade here. Um, waiting for him to come out last night, maybe eight or 10 animals in there, two or three younger bulls, one giant, and, um, and the rest cows, the rut's starting, so <clears throat> pretty exciting stuff. I'm sure he'll come out tonight. There's like, there's no one hunts here. There's no pressure on him. There's no reason for him not to. I've li I literally have this evening left. I got two hours of personal time left. I have to um, get back. No, not that the fun's over. I mean, these guys that are coming in are good friends of mine and clients. But the truth is, uh, yeah, it's back to work. just came out of the top of the mountain on the edge of this field where we saw them last night so good sign they're starting to move yesterday there was six or eight cows so we'll see what happens that's our wool the one that walked up yeah. okay i only see there's another one there now there's another one now yeah. uh, i mean that you can't be mistaken by that one no, why do you... Oh, now he's coming out with a... He's following a cow. He's right on her. We gotta go. No, we need to go. Okay, we are so lucky. The second animal that comes out of the mountain tonight is our bull. And then he left. I was a little bummed. And then he came right out with a young, young heifer, and he's uh, he's lip curling. He's not going anywhere. I think we're gonna get this guy. Kudu fever. He's a giant kudu. Yes, if, if, if one of the females are there, if they spot us and they turn around, they they're gone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not like that, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I know. A lucky break gives Rob one last chance for a kudu of a lifetime. Ten thousand miles west, Bo Morgan's luck isn't looking as good. Come up in here and get my uh, suburban high centered and spinning wheels and just trying to figure out if I can even get into where I need to get so I can go look at the back of the place and uh, it's not looking too good. Oh, there goes the muffler. What? Muffler's pinched over there. Coming up our road and uh, coming around one of the corners. 
there's some big boulders in our way and big holes and I'm not in a my rock crawler Jeep this trip so it uh, gets a little creative to get in here and uh, didn't know if we we're gonna do it and have to start from the bottom and figure out how to get all the way to the back it just makes it such a, a long push On. Go another hundred yards and see if we can get stuck again. True Magnum TV is brought to you by Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. Snap safe. Security everywhere you want it. Prairie King Ranch. And by True Magnum, the world's best hunting. The North American model of game conservation is the best one that's ever been made anywhere, and it's been copied all over the world now. That's not a debatable principle. The way the North American model works is hunters bring the time, the energy, and the money, and the game departments, which they fund, bring the knowledge. They do the measuring, they decide the quotas, they decide the regulations, and they're the professional biologists. They manage the game, they use hunters to regulate populations. The wolf created a very interesting problem, not only for hunters and not only for game departments, um, but really for the whole of the West. Contrary to what you might think, uh, wolves were not eliminated from the West because of fear. They were eliminated from the West because of economics. Nobody likes to talk about economics when they talk about wildlife, except that because somebody cared enough to use economics, to benefit wildlife, we have wildlife again. Obviously, nobody in America is old enough right now to remember the days of market hunting and what that did to us. It was sport hunting that righted that ship. If I get lucky and get a wolf, am I gonna eat it? No, I'm not gonna eat it. So why am I gonna shoot it? Because it's management. Just the mere fact of hunting wolves saves game, even if you don't get one. And the reason is, wolves hate humans. So they will typically go hunt as far away from humans as they possibly can. When you start seeing wolves interact with, with livestock and pets and game that has moved closer to human populations, it's because the wolves are running out in the wilderness. If our game departments aren't finding hunters willing to go out and have a good opportunity at hunting an elk or a deer, they aren't gonna be funded well enough and then we have a problem. What would we do without game departments well-funded? Game departments of Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho are basically begging hunters right now to go out and hunt wolves. Well, what if we don't? If we as hunters don't figure out how to hit that measured harvest quota, it gets awful from there. Now the game departments have to come up with new methods, including poisoning, helicopter shooting, uh, it just gets ugly and it costs a lot of money. Hunters do it all for free. They do it out of their own pocket. And hopefully you don't have to walk off the mountain, but if so, gotta have a way to do that. What are you doing? What do you mean? <laughs> Why did you put it upside down? I figure if I need to read that number, I'll probably be wheels up, so. <laughs> just planning ahead. Snow crawling alone in the winter backcountry is a very dangerous undertaking, and it's not advised. James will be crawling alone and takes the necessary precautions oh, yes. for survival. There we go. Now we're ready to rock and roll. You just have to show them a fun sport, a good pastime, and reasonable chance of success. I'm hoping to show hunters a reasonable chance of success. That said, but it's a wolf, the most adaptable predator on the planet, the hardest species on the planet to hunt on purpose. In Texas, the process of culling Audad out of desert bighorn country is back on track. 
albeit a steep one. Oh yeah, it's steep. Well, we're running out of days here. Got pretty uh, effort, big effort this morning getting up in here. Uh, so I uh, wanted to get up on top, check all the stuff where we typically see big horns and uh, checking for out dad in there, you know. I really want to make sure they're not infringing on where we're seeing big horns. So that, that has been the goal of the thing and we're running out of days. I think I'll put Nick in the shooter tomorrow and go back into another place, kind of a fringe, and uh, see if we can make something happen. We get all the way to the back, you know, where we want to go, and man, my hopes are high. The wind isn't too bad, and uh, we top out. Wind's blowing, ripping, and so that that cuts your viewing for the animals about by in half because they're bedded up or out of the wind and in pockets where you can't see. And so all this anticipation to get here, and it wasn't uh, wasn't as fruitful as we hoped. High winds make this day all for naught. Bo's crew turns back. Safety first. I don't know, but I'm gonna jump out. <laughs> Ten thousand miles east. Rob Dunham's dream of taking a giant kudu is only steps away. Oh, there's a young bull that came out. He's looking at us. Let's try and keep it a little bit low. He snuck through this field. We're 150 yards from where he was. A young bull's looking straight at us. And another walked off. So we, there, there's a bit of a swale in the land. We don't know if he's down in there or they just took their time and wandered off that way. But we're running out of time. Gotta be patient. Looks like it's over. I, uh, I didn't get that big bull. It's gonna be one of those animals, you know, that white tail when you're 16 years old that you missed or got away. Well, that big elk in the mountains, well, I got a big kudu that was probably 58 or nine inches that by the time I get back home, it's gonna be 63. But uh, it's one of those things that's gonna live in my mind. All the guys, the image of that big bull standing there, those wide horns, big deep curls, something you never forget. In route over here, I put a bunch of feelers out, trying to see uh, see if we can catch up to someone. He's doing a, a, a trophy hunt uh, for our dad, you know, just show the different management plans in both places. Uh, nice contrast to see what works here in the states and why. And um, we got a call today that we can do that, so we'll be a tag along, um, kind of switch it up and uh, run down and catch up to somebody that's going in for some big our dad, one of the premier spots in the country right now so should be good right in the heart of the big owl dad country and see if we can get a big trophy ram shot and show you the difference in some densities amount of animals and uh, how they're managing for a different product here so nice contrast to what we are doing checking out the terrain and it's and it's a lot different than we're hunting only 100 miles away so totally different stuff the more we get in this big valley it just reminds me of somewhere else like uh, you know it could be in the middle of valley in Montana or something it's just kind of a wild transition into uh, different vegetation and different elevation stuff and pretty neat to see it all new country is always neat to see
With transportation obtained, James moves on to phase two of the project, finding the best lightweight, long-range rifle. Hello, James Bryan for Ian. This guy. Ooh, that's nice. Long range. 6'5 by 284. Oh, that feels good. That stock's nice. That stock is nice. <laughs> this place is always pretty distracting, though. Every time I walk in here, it's like, puts a smile on your face, all this cool stuff to look at, but Ian says he's got a special wolf gun for me, so like if it's half as good as anything I'm seeing here, this should be great. Hey, Ian. Hey, good morning. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Pick out a wolf gun for me? She is. Oh, boy. Oh, it doesn't weigh anything. Gotta love the carbon barrel, huh? No kidding. Wow. Better. Better. That gun's better than anything in here. For this purpose, this is gonna be ideal. Okay, now I get it. I know what you were saying. Is this, this is probably the, the long range one that, no, that we'd actually, all, that's this, not this it. This is the long range model. This is that's, the long range the model. Country long range lightweight. So that's oh. uh, this rifle right here, just with a different barrel on it. Oh wow, that makes a huge difference, yeah. eh? Oh, this'll be, this'll be ideal. Strap that on and uh, yeah, this will be better on the snowshoes hiking to the top yep. than, uh, than that other one. This is great. For what I need in the next 30 days, this gun's perfect. That feels good. That's an amazing gun right there. I think you're gonna like shooting. Yeah, for sure. That thing is super comfortable. Wow. <laughs> it's in my colors too. <laughs> we do what we can. <laughs> Phase one, transportation. Phase two, long range rifle. I think we're doing pretty good. How's the PRC project coming anyway? Uh, it's coming. In fact, I've, uh, I've got something to show you if you want to come see it. Really? Really. That sounds exciting. Let's go check it out. Hey, this is a surprise. Put your, put something there for us. Put your hand underneath it, Nick. Where for his elbows. He's exact like same spot. Mm -hmm. When Ian says he's got something special to show me, yeah, I, I have a feeling I know what it is, but if so, this is too good to be true. All right, come on in, James. Well, we're going to the range, so I know that's a good thing. On our way to our new camp, mm. and big man ran us out of fuel. Did you keep on pumping? The gauge was lying. <laughs> 